Hey everybody, this is the Lego Marvel What If set, Captain Carter and the Hydra Stopper. This set comes with exactly the right figures, so we'll take a closer look at those later, but I am happy with the selection here and the overall composition of the set. The size is definitely wrong. It is way, way oversized, but not as bad as the Iron Monger, at least the Iron Monger. It's just, just ridiculous, but at least this looks pretty good to me. Um, I'm not going to spoil anything for folks who haven't been able to catch up with Marvel's What If just yet. Sorry about the focus right there, but this was from episode one. So if you have started to get into What If over on Disney Disney Plus, then you've already seen this thing in action. And I'm sure that Lego did not have spoilers in advance, as usual, of what the story was going to be like and exactly how this thing was going to be used and everything. So they probably had just uh, a couple... Uh, pictures of it from or maybe a few pictures from a few angles and that's about it and they had to go from there but I think they did a pretty pretty darn good job now this does use some stickers so you can see stickers there on the arm uh, it's got some stickers on the front as well and stickers down for the toes again just the the beef in general makes this thing well, it, it just kind of uh, flavors, I think, the, the whole thing. Its size is rather overwhelming. The choice of green, I think, is is fine. Uh, in universe, the real thing wasn't this, this bright, wasn't this vibrant, this verdant. One thing that's really cool here is that behind this trans light blue tile piece is a glow-in-the-dark uh, uh, one-by-two plate. You know, just the little glow-in-the-dark white. Uh, part so you know you turn out the lights you can see a little bit of glow there glow in the dark stuff nowadays doesn't last as long as it used to and you know use a black light i've charged this thing up i've had experience with with these parts and yeah glow in the dark stuff just is a little bit disappointing these days but it's it's enough to to know that it's there and kids will appreciate it when they you know shine a flashlight on it or put it up against a, a table lamp or something and then turn the lights out you know you can see that it continues to glow for a little bit the articulation here is not bad uh, for the arm, you, know, you got fingers that are individual and able to articulate as well. I got the thumb here. This is a, a stud shooter. There's a stud shooter over here as well. You can see those as shooting off fire, which makes sense to me. The shoulders are on ball joints, so they're able to go up. They also have the, the way that they're attached, the way that they're arranged, they allow a little bit of cross. Just a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit of cross across the... Uh, across the, the the front you know across the chest so i do appreciate that and if you really want to you can rotate this around like so by picking it up it's unfortunate that you're not able to just rotate that straight straight on but you know you can you can do something so that gives you some options for different posing and then for the legs they've got ball joints for the ankles and those are strong enough and there's the 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 feet themselves are long enough that this is able to remain stable, either straight up or leaning quite a bit forward. And then taking advantage of that ability to go forward, you can splay the legs out to get enough room to then move a foot forward and it's able to hold itself up like that. So, you know, there is some decent stability here. I really wish that you could move the the legs. Oh, there we go. It's just starting to finally, finally fall over. But I really wish that you could move the the legs straight forward you do have to splay them out in order to get that range of motion that that forward range of motion they won't just go see they'll go back but they won't go forward because they, they get limited right up in there right up in there that just stops right at the belt essentially so you have to make space and then you can move that out could have been a little bit better but realistically it's not terrible for the sake of play the head or the face at least is a print obviously it's a Creature and character building system shoulder pad piece uh, that's that's been printed up exclusive to this set and it looks pretty good. the The graphic design work there is definitely very good, and some of the some of the production work is very good in terms of it it being nice and crisp. However, the green is too dark. It's supposed to be the same color, so that color there is supposed to be the same color as this, and it's not. Uh, you can look on the box art, you can look at all the official images, and they've adjusted that to make it look the same. Uh, I'm actually okay with this. I, I'm, I'm willing to let this go for for what this for what this set is, uh, for its era and everything. It doesn't look that bad to me. Plus, this set does have plenty of dark green on it, and none of the greens on this are 100% accurate. I'm, o I'm willing to let that slide uh, for the, from the perspective of this being a toy. However, 
Lego should do better than that, or they should be honest in their advertising. They should show you on the box what it will actually look like. And in the, the official pictures, it should show what it will actually look like and not what they, what, not what they want it to look like. You know, just, just match those things up for the sake of, of honesty in advertising. I like the build of the rest of the head though. The fact that you do build it up, you got kind of the, the pseudo ears there as well. That's nice. The tanks back here are pretty simple, but I like that. But uh, this is, of course, the spot where you put the figure in and the front opens up as well, not just the top. It's very convenient and easy to put a figure in there, close this up. He's not moving. Bring this down. Try to find a spot that you like. You know, you can bring this farther out. You can kind of tuck it in a little bit. And well, I definitely see Steve Rogers' head there. That's that's too bad. I wish more of that was covered up, you know? It's not it's not bad. I've seen worse, but I do wish that that was covered up just a just a bit more. Steve Rogers on the left has a good jumpsuit. Uh, the choice of olive for his outfit is good. Would have been nice to get something closer to that for the entire mech, but it probably would have required a lot of part recolors. I'm okay with with uh, what they did with with the green again but for this guy it would have been nice to get some some at least hip printing if not leg printing at least hip printing to add a little more detail to that there are a couple problems with captain carter here uh one is uh, i'm willing to bet not lego's fault but this is a desaturated version of her outfit again would have been nice to get some more print a little bit a little bit lower on the figure it's done pretty decently well for what it is but in the episode they they focus on the fully saturated version of her with the, the standard colors for the Union Jack and those are really missing here almost makes it look like there's just a bunch of print that that didn't happen you know like a couple of the inks were dry also this shield has a big misprint on it looks really cool if you think of it as battle damage but it's not supposed to be like that and yeah, again I, I I I don't think I can fault Lego for going with the with the just silver color scheme for the the union jack there it's probably what they got for source material um you know they were probably just mis misinformed on that uh this red skull is great though the inclusion of the stud shooter and no realistic blaster or no realistic gun i should say is straight up gun this from world, world war ii era uh is is a little bit of a miss would have been nice to get one of those also but if you have to choose between one or the other this is i think the correct decision for this as a toy set uh, it's a lot more fun to be able to shoot a stud at the Hydra Stomper than, than to not. And the prints for that character are really good. That figure are really good. And I really like that Tesseract as well. Yes, it's oversized, but so are minifig heads. Super, super oversized. And that is a Minecraft minifig uh, head. Uh, this the the uh, It's essentially the, the charged creeper head with no print on it. And it looks fantastic to me. It looks absolutely glorious. So I'm happy with that. Looking at these around the backs, the back torso prints are very good and you do get alternate face right there alternate face right there which is probably a better one to look at let me actually show you what that looks like framed up with the hair also for folks who have seen the episode i do want to point out that there's nothing really on the back for a minifigure to potentially hold on to let me just grab a random minifigure though to show you one thing that is possible if you want to connect a minifigure to the outside of this to have it be a two passenger setup you can just grab on right there it's not the best look and again the <laughs> the scale is so far off but you can do that thing these are the leftover pieces and then there's also this side build of sorts which everyone tells me is just to be used to hold extra stud shooter shots it's just a inverted tile it looks really weird to me it looks like a uh, minecraft gassed fireball coming at you or something i don't know it's just it's odd but uh, there's the spent sticker sheet. You can see quite a few stickers for a set of this size. So I paid $30 US for this. That's its retail price. And I feel kind of okay about that. Not great, not great. I feel like it's an acceptable price for the amount of stuff here. I feel like I'm having to stretch just a little bit to to justify this in my mind for what I see here. But the minifigure selection is, again, is right. It's absolutely right. I wish, again, that Carter was more colorful. Uh, the number of pieces here is good. You know, this definitely could have been done in a simpler way. Maybe that's what I'm really thinking. That's, that's, what, that's where my mind is going with this. I would expect this to be simpler 
for what it is. This is an eight plus set. So it, it's elevated a little bit. I'm, I'm probably thinking in terms of it being a six plus, no, nah, seven plus thing, which is a little a little bit of difference in the, you know, it doesn't matter that much, but just on a, on a scale of difficulty, I expect something like this with this level of articulation or lack thereof to be a little bit simpler. But in fact, there are a lot of pieces here and that's why the price is higher. And the, the, the building detail and building complexity is higher than it needs to be. And I don't mind that because it looks much better like this than it would have if they had skimped out and tried to make it much, much simpler. So definitely there are some compromises there. I'm not 100% confident in all of them myself, but I would not recommend against this set. If you, if you like it, uh, you're okay with the, the retail price yourself. I think that you'll be happy with it. I think that you'll be perfectly happy with it. If you're on, if you're on the fence, I still think that you would be happy with it. If you think that it's too expensive, look at it some more. You may, you may be right for you, you know, especially if you're not into to minifigures. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a little, I'm, I'm not, I'm not super confident in one direction or the other with, with value, but those are my thoughts. I am here to share you, share with you, uh, what, what I think, and hopefully at least I've shown you enough to help you to come to your own conclusions. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you again very soon.